On today's episode, we talk about the relaunch and remake of the podcast, and we'll also talk about the holiday stress and how it affects families and what we can do about that. Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips that we all can do on a daily basis, which can lead us to finding our inner peace. I know that inner peace is possible. I've been without it. I've found ways to get it. And on this podcast, we talk about ways that we can find it and keep it Welcome on a daily to basis. Another episode of On Finding Peace. My name is Chris, and I'm your host and founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. And here we are again with our uh, revamp of the podcast. Yay! Um, As you can probably tell, I don't yet have all my sound effects together, but in the future, you will have sound effects. But I'm very pleased uh, with this remake, and um, I'm very happy for a service called Megaphone, which is helping to make this remake possible. So we have moved all of our uh, previous podcast episodes over to Megaphone, and they are doing the back-end work for the podcast. So we are very uh, pleased uh, for their service. And uh, you'll also begin to hear some advertisements. And I know a lot of us don't always like advertisements, but advertisements help to pay the bills because even though we listen to our podcast for free, the production of these podcasts uh, are not free. So, uh, with that, I also want to bring up our uh, next new topic, and that's uh, our addition onto the Patreon website. Now, for those of you who listen to podcasts all the time, you will be quite familiar with the uh Patreon and who they are and what they do. Um, For those who are not, Patreon is a website uh, where I have set up a page, and this is where we would ask listeners to the podcast that if you really enjoy what we're all about and you like the message that we're delivering and you would like us to keep the message alive, then we ask you to become a patron. Yes, that involves just a little bit of money. But what Patreon has set up for us is a very nice website with membership benefits. See, I'm not just asking you to give me money. Now, if you just want to give me money, I'm not going to say no to it either. But there are three different levels sitting over there on Patreon. And I would uh, ask you to head on over to Patreon. Uh, The link will be in the show notes, Um, but if you want to do that as you're listening, uh, just go over to the uh, patreon.com and search for this podcast on Finding Peace. But we have three different levels, and with those levels come all different uh, sorts of benefits. So check out the benefits and see which level you can help us with. Honestly, any level is uh, helpful. Um, And what are we going to do with all of this money? Well, it's not just going to line my pockets because that's not what I'm all about. So all of the monies that are collected through Patreon as well as through the uh, advertisers um, to this uh, podcast 
all of that money actually goes back into this podcast. So the more that we can get in, then the better quality that we can uh, have for this podcast. I do want to point out a couple things over on the Patreon page. Uh, so for those who are interested, there is a level, um, and I'll let you take a look at all these levels, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot for what level uh, you can contribute. But there is a level over on that page that if you uh, want to contribute monthly, you will get every year that you are contributing monthly at this particular level, merchandise. Yes, there is on Finding Peace and Life's Journey Life Coaching merchandise that you will get for free and you will get this merchandise yearly as long as you stay on that level, but you also get to choose the merchandise you want. That's right. See, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what merchandise I'm giving you. Nah, that doesn't necessarily make us happy or give us inner peace when I just give you something that you didn't want in the first place. Because if you want a coffee mug, I'd rather you tell me I want a coffee mug, and hey, you've got the coffee mug. And if you want a shirt or a polo or... Almost anything. I have a list. I'll give you the list. You choose. You tell me what you want. You get that. Now, we can only have so many coffee mugs. So I've been told. So, if you are going to continue to be a sponsor every year, and the next time we roll around and you're due for your next free merchandise, you don't have to pick the same thing again. I'm going to give you uh, that list, or maybe the list will be updated by then. You will get the list. Um, there are some levels on there if you want to be uh, getting the behind the scenes look at things. And as we talked about ads on this podcast, and you know, not everybody likes ads. I know, I get it. So be a member. If you're a member of this podcast, there is a level that you can choose, and I will send you the link to this podcast. No ads. Now, don't be telling people over a megaphone what I'm doing here. But I'm just saying, if you enter at a certain level, yes, you can get ad-free this podcast. So, as I say, check it out. Go over to patreon.com, look for On Finding Peace, or uh, just check us out on the show notes, and that's where I'll have the link. So, part of this revamping of the show is not only bringing in advertisement, and it's not just switching over to another provider, but I really wanted to revamp the show to make it much more interactive than what we were. So, if you look at our past episodes, which I love, and I highly suggest you look at them, we were bringing on guests all the time, and these guests were just great people giving you wonderful advice and tips. We'll still have guests periodically, but what I'd like to do is to be a lot more interactive. So what I'm looking for now is all of you to be able to send me messages, send me an email, let me know what topics of interest are for you. What would you like to know more about as we move on with this podcast? So what's the point of this podcast, you might ask? The point of this podcast uh, goes along with our title. It is called On Finding Peace. And I'm quite convinced over uh, the last number of years that living with inner peace, finding one's happiness, is very doable and very possible. The issue is we don't always know how to do that. So the point of this podcast, and really the point of everything that I do within uh, Life's Journey Realm, is about guiding us to finding our inner peace. So that's what I'd like you to begin thinking about, or what are some of these topics that you would like to hear about that would help you learn more about finding your inner peace? I'll take those topics. We'll check it out and see if we can get them on the air, and we'll talk about these topics. 
Now, if you go over to the Patreon page, not yet for this feature. There is going to be a chat feature on there. It's just not there yet. Um, but that's going to be up and running so that you can send these things through that page. Or go over to my webpage, lifesjourneyblog.com, and you'll find all the ways that you can connect with me on social media, email, and the like. So there's a lot of ways that you can drop us a line. You can let us know what it is that you're interested in uh, hearing about. Now, again, for um, those who look at the Patreon site, one of the things that you will discover is I do have a goal on that site. So the site isn't just uh, there to get some members, but I've, all, I've also set a goal for all of us. If I can reach $500 a month in sponsorship, now, not necessarily from one person, although I'll take that as well, but if we can get up to $500 in sponsorships a month, then what I'm going to start to do is bringing one listener onto this show each month. So you too could come on the show, and we can have an interview style where I can talk to you about what goes on in your life. How is it that you find your happiness, your inner peace? Uh, you can ask questions uh, of myself. You can ask questions of the audience. And that will just be a, a really good time uh, for us to learn from the larger community. So I'm hoping we can get to that as quickly as possible so that I can start just bringing on all of you listeners. Now, how am I going to pick who gets on? I haven't gotten there yet. Seriously, I set up the Patreon page today, to be totally honest with you guys. So, I set the goal. I really hope that we get there. Once it looks like we're getting close, I'm going to have to start coming up with some ideas of how I'm going to pick you guys. Um, now, if you guys have any ideas, please, you know, again, drop me a line and let me know what you're thinking. Um, but don't, don't drop me a line and ask me how am I going to pick that. Because right now there's zero dollars sitting over there, so I'm not even worrying about that right now. You know, finding li life uh, inner peace is all about living in the moment. So, in the moment, not something I need to deal with. So this is how uh, we're restructuring, restructuring the show. Um, hopefully I can speak better. Is, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to work it off of uh, some interviews. Uh, sometimes I, I may have some local uh, guests on, and uh, we'll be hopefully talking about what you guys are interested in. And uh, that's kind of the revamp that I'm looking at. So hopefully this is something you guys like. Um, and that's where we are on the newness. So now that we've talked way much about that, let me move on to what the topic really is. Because I do have a topic for today. I'm just going to advertise Patreon to you guys. So, the topic that I wanted to look at today is called Coping with Family Stress. Now, this is an article that I recently published over on my webpage. Uh, if you haven't been to my webpage, Life's journeyblog.com uh, check out the webpage and uh, you'll notice that I, I do put blog posts, articles videos and the like over there but um, one of the things uh, that you'll notice is, is the most recent one is coping with family stress and I wanted to bring that up because if you didn't get a chance to read it which I highly suggest that you do um We'll give a, a summary and, and just talk a little bit about, you know, how do we cope with our family stress um, when the holidays are upon us. Because regardless of how we celebrate this time of the year, and for those who are listening and saying, like, I don't know what he's talking about, but this, this is no time of celebration for me, um, I get that. I know we don't all feel uh, like we want to celebrate. Um, 
you know, last year I, I had a, uh, well, my father had uh, passed uh, right at Thanksgiving. So, um, you know, who wanted to celebrate last uh, Thanksgiving, last Christmas, or I guess in some regards this year. Um, so I, I, I get it. You know, we're not all there. Now, if you know of people who really and people who are dealing with uh, this time of the year, and this is going to sound really cheesy, but I wrote another article. Um, check that out on the website. Uh, see what I mean by that sound of cheesy? I, did, I didn't mean for that transition to go the way that did. Uh, but I do have some tips there on, on how you can help some people uh, cope with the, um, you know, this time of the year when everyone, you know, seems to be all happy-go-lucky and, and some people just, you know, can't get it. Um, and, and that's, you know, fully understandable. But I think, you know, as Thanksgiving comes along and then uh, we start looking at the Hanukkah and Christmas and all the other seasons that, you know, get celebrated this time of the year, all the way through New Year's, family stress just goes on the increase. And I know I'm probably preaching to the choir because I don't know any families who don't feel that stress, um, you know, as it comes upon them. So I'm quite sure that, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. I find that there's two major reasons why our stress increases. I think the first reason that our stress increases is because we're looking at this season with very high expectations. And it's our expectations which become our problem. Now, I, I've talked and written before about expectations and how expectations are the number one factor in what causes us stress and anxiety. But when we look at the expectations of the year, many of us feel the pressure to make this perfect. Because we knew in, in many of our upbringings that we were taught family traditions. And as we get older, and maybe now we get married, maybe we have kids, or we're just getting older, and those traditions are now falling to us to put on family dinners, to have the celebrations. Maybe now some of the other um, relatives are beginning to age, and they moved into smaller places, and... So it's now that transition, everyone now comes to your house. So you don't want to let the family down, and you raise these very high expectations, and you start to realize these expectations are probably way too high, way too unrealistic. But you don't care, you know they're unrealistic, but you're going to make this perfect. We've been there. But again, I, I think we just need to realize nothing is going to be perfect. But I think that's what causes a lot of our stress, because when things aren't getting perfect, or certain family members, friends, our kids, whomever, aren't cooperating, and this is starting to, at least in your mind, fall apart. And I say at least in your mind, because... If it's not meeting your expectation, then you may feel like it's falling apart, but in reality, it, it's actually fine. Um, it's just not going to meet your expectation, and I get that. Um, I think, though, the second reason why the stress rises uh, this time of the year, all the travel. Now, I'm going to place under travel the fact that you may have to arrange travel for yourself or for your family. You may have to arrange travel for other family members, friends, whatever, uh, to be getting to you. Depending where you live, uh, traveling at this time of the year can be uh, treacherous, can be unknown. Plans might end up getting changed at the last minute. That's increasing the stress. But here's the other thing that I think with travel that increases the stress. What about all these family members who are coming back into town 
And you might have thought that this was a wonderful idea that, hey, why don't you stay with us? We have room. Once they stay with you for a night, you now remember why you moved away from them in the first place? Yeah, this adds to our stress. I mean, even if we like all of our family members, and I'm not saying that we don't, but even in the best of circumstances, we now have people living under our roof who are changing our routine because they don't know what the routine is, and their routine is off because it's not their house either. And on top of that, you have the expectations, the traditions, and those stressors. Not a good combo for this time of the year. So I think that's the two main reasons why our stress goes up. And I'm even talking in the best of circumstances. Now let's throw in some other issues that, that may come upon in, at this time of the year, and everything goes haywire. So... I wanted to bring this up just to say that, you know, if you're feeling that way, one, keep in mind that you're not the only one. Most of us are doing this. All of us, at some point, are, are going to stress over what's going on, um, you know, for this uh, holiday season. But I've come up with uh, three things for us to focus on so that it'll help us to cope with, deal with, this time of the year. And the first thing I wanted to mention are expectations. What we need to do with our expectations is to realize when those expectations are realistic and when they're not. So if you're really finding yourself getting stressed at this time of the year, Think about the expectations and try to discover the ones that you are just taking maybe way too far. I'm not saying have lowered expectations, not at all. It's important to challenge ourselves and family tradition is important. But it depends what we mean by that. And that's going to be very individualistic. You know, one of the things that I can think of is, you know, what, what if, you know, you ask somebody to help you set the table and they put the fork just, you know, slightly an inch or so off from where you wanted it? Probably not something for us to freak out about. Uh, somebody forgets to bring the main meal and it's time to eat. Okay, might be a little bit different. That'll be another podcast. But keep your expectations as also on expectations, when family begins to gather and you know that every year there's that particular family member and we all have that member who you know is going to get on your nerves, either because they're going to be drinking too much, they're going to be talking politics, they're just going to be getting in your face, you just don't like them, it doesn't matter, but we all have that person in, in our family structure. Don't let that person get under your skin. Don't let them ruin this holiday. Because what you need to keep in mind is you know, from experience, you know that this is how they're going to act. This is what they're going to do. If you know that person every year is going to have this issue, and you know it's going to upset you every year, you have to let that go. Because when they show up, yeah, it's going to prove you're right. They're probably going to do the same thing over and over and over because that's what they do. But don't let that get to you. Because in expecting it to happen, you can already create some coping strategies for that. It's different if somebody shows up and acts totally out of character and you don't know what to do with this. That's a different story. But I'm talking about the individuals who always do this. What is it that you can do to plan differently? Make it so that they don't ruin things for you or the rest of the family. At least mentally prepare yourself for what's going to happen. So that's what I mean by the expectations. Also, I think it's important to look at our feelings. One of the things that I write a lot about 
is the aspect that we are in control of our feelings. Now, whether we want to believe that or not, we are. And maybe that'll be another podcast episode. But I've definitely written about it if you want to search my website for it. But when we... Our feelings, our reactions, are in our control. So, when things happen or seem to go wrong, we can remind ourselves, wait a minute, I don't have to respond in a way that's going to make me feel negative. We have a lot of choices in our responses. You know, if you want to look at, say, that one family member who you know is going to get on your nerves, and then they, they on cue, start doing what they normally do, and you feel your frustration level, you know, going up, you can remind yourself that it's not this individual who is making you feel frustrated, angry, whatever. This is an emotion that you are allowing to happen. So if you feel an anger or frustration popping up over this individual, don't let that get to you. Change it. Change how you feel about that. You could kind of look at the situation and chuckle within yourself and say, yeah, I called that one, knew that was going to happen. You could decide to walk away. Go talk to some other people. Go do something else. Get some fresh air, maybe. There are choices in our responses. So when we look at our feelings, if there's a number of, of what we would say are negative emotions welling up within us, examine what's bothering us and start to look at, well, how else could I relate to this? And if you can't think of a way to relate, then remove yourself. You can always walk out. I'm sure wherever you are, there's another room or there's a place that you can walk outside. So you are in control of your emotions, and that's something that is really important, um, you know, to keep in mind. And the third and last uh, tip that I have is to remind yourself that it's okay. What do I mean by that? Well, we have to remind ourselves that once our family gatherings are happening, it's okay. Whatever is happening, we can deal with if we need to deal with it, or we can choose to ignore it if we can actually safely, healthy uh, matter ignore it. To know that the relative who wants to talk politics and get in your face about you know whatever that you just don't want to deal with, Keep in mind that it, it is okay that they have their viewpoint, because you have your viewpoint. You may not be putting it out in their face, as they are doing to you, but you do need to remind yourself that their viewpoint may be getting on your nerves because you disagree with it. But the fact that you disagree with their viewpoint means you have your own. Your viewpoint is not more important than their viewpoint. What they're doing with their viewpoint and what you're doing with yours, that's what makes the difference. But instead of getting all upset about them voicing their viewpoint, you can politely walk away, but understand, I have my own viewpoints. So it's okay to have a viewpoint. It may not be okay to spread it at this gathering, but we all have our viewpoints. We all have our emotions and feelings. We all have our, our thoughts about what this whole season is supposed to be. Um, we all have our own expectations of, of how we would like this season to be. But those expectations and those our own traditions, they're okay. But they may not be the same as somebody else's. And again... That's okay. We do have differing opinions. And depending on the level of relationship that we have with someone who has this differing opinion, that's going to matter what I do with this. If this is just an acquaintance or you know one of the many co-workers that you may have, you can just brush this off. No big deal. We all have um, you know our, our own viewpoints. 
if this is a spouse, a life partner, uh, your children, you might handle that a little Maybe you can talk about the differing viewpoints or, you know, is there some way that you can combine traditions and, you know, make sure that you're honoring all people, uh, you know, within the close family structure. So I hope that by looking at our perspective and our emotions and reminding ourselves that, you know, it really is ultimately okay, you know, we can find ourselves less stressful. And maybe we can enjoy the holiday season and enjoy family, enjoy friends. Just enjoy tradition. And if you don't have tradition or don't like your tradition, it's never too late to start tradition. Do something different this year. Do something new this year. And if you like it and others seem to like it, do it again next year. Now it's tradition. Do it enough years in a row, and nobody's going to remember where this started, and they're all going to be talking about, hey, when did this tradition ever start? Um, and then come up with some wild family story about centuries ago. But the point being, take a deep breath, and just remember that it's okay. So if you have any comments on this, any uh, further suggestions, anything that you want to share, Again, feel free to put it on the um, Patreon page. Feel free to go over to the website and add comments there. Um, email me, social media me, whatever uh, works for you. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. And I also look forward to uh, doing more of these podcasts. You can expect uh, at least a couple a month, um, if not more. So for now... Take a deep breath, enjoy your moment, and have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode, and I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening and have a very mindful day. listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.